Who am I? You know me, my dear friends? I think you know me. If you don't know me, let me introduce myself to you. I'm your teacher, or you may say I'm your instructor, and above all, I'm your friend. What do we do on this channel? We generally learn English. Why do we learn English? In order to make a very attractive career that is very important for everybody. And some of us learn English because uh, they love English. They love the language. Perhaps they don't need to learn this language for their profession, but still they, they are interested in English and they want to speak English just because they love this language. Now we are, we are learning this language in a very systematic way. And that is very important because learning English is just a cakewalk. Cakewalk is a new phrase to you. Cakewalk means a very easy task. So we are learning English in a systematic way so that English learning becomes a very joyful experience. We don't feel bored. Otherwise, uh, it is very natural for us to feel that uh, learning a new language or learning especially a foreign language is somewhat like a burden. But when we learn it in a proper method, we think it is really very, very easy. We will learn seven new words today. And all these seven new words are very meaningfully packed meaningfully charged. So if you use one particular word that we are going to learn today, uh, that word serves the purpose of so many words. If you want to make your language a very wordy or very uh, verbose, then use this so many words. And if you want to make your English very epigrammatic, you understand epigrammatic? Very short, and meaningful, short and meaningful. So then you have to use the words which I'm going to write here very soon. Those of you who are interested in speaking English in a very uh, modern fashion must, in, must learn these words with me. Okay? And uh, what is the first word then? Let's read this. But my dear friends, I think you have not forgotten to uh, watch this video full screen. Why full screen? If you don't watch it full screen, will it be possible for you to make out what is written here? Probably not. And if you cannot make out what is written here, you just listen to what I am saying, it will become a little difficult for you. So I shall advise you or rather request you to watch this video full screen. Let's now get directly into our today's lesson. Number one, a person with a compact and muscular build of the body. You must have seen a guy of this sort. Yeah? So I, there are some bodybuilders whose uh, muscles, when they flex their muscles, the muscles stand out. And especially if they do this uh, from uh, a particular high place, that's a stage, say, for example, then uh, they generally smear their bodies with oil, oily substance. And uh, when they flex their muscles, the muscles look very glossy and they stand out. So what are they called? A person of this sort, a person who has a compact and muscular build of the body. What is it called? Is there any single word for that? Yes, my dear friends, there is. And that is what I'm going to write here now for you to note down in your exercise book so that you can commit that word to memory and next time when you speak English, uh, if you get the opportunity to use this word, you must not uh, refrain from using this word. Okay, so let me write this word first. Wait a minute, please. The word is mesomorph. Mesomorph. Let me write the spelling. I'm, I'm just uh, spelling out the word very loudly so that you can 
here m e s o m o r p h mesomorph mesomorph m e s o m o r p h mesomorph means a person with a compact and muscular build of the body let's make a sentence now uh, i i just uh, i was standing on the railway platform this suddenly i saw a uh, mesomorph uh, stood in front of me and his uh, body really uh, attracted me i felt very attracted to his body but unfortunately i myself do not exercise so what a mesomorph does a mesomorph always exercises on a daily basis okay exercise exercise has a very colloquial uh, phrase and that is it, uh, especially exercise is just uh, lifting iron lifting weights lifting weights in spoken english in colloquial english you may say he pumps iron he pumps p u m p s pumps iron so those who pump iron become generally mesomorphs let's uh, move on to word number 2 the meaning is the model employed by a dressmaker etc to show clothes to customers have you ever walked uh, down the aisle of a shopping mall shopping complex if you have already walked then you must have seen a lot of models lot of dolls dolls are kept in the shop windows and the dolls sport different types of clothes so that your attention is drawn to the clothes and what are those dolls called those models called no human being of course keeps standing there throughout the day this is a doll and the doll some uh, some very fashionable garments are put on the dolls and the dolls attract you what is the doll called in english there is a single word for that do you know the word i think you know the word you must have heard the word somewhere if you know the word please write down in the comment box so that i understand that my friends already have learned the word from some other source i'll be very happy to know that you really know this particular word and the word is mannequin right let me write down that m a n n there is double n m a double n e q e u i n the word is mannequin mannequin there is a beautiful mannequin in the shop window we uh, we generally get into the shop where we see there are certain mannequin uh, sports a very beautiful uh, garment a beautiful fashionable dress so the word is mannequin there are so many mannequins in all the clothes stores yeah really let's move on to number 3 and number 3 is a verb this is a noun this is also a noun mesomorph before that you have to use that common i'm sorry it's a common noun so you have to use an article before that he is a mesomorph this is also a common noun so you have to say there is a mannequin okay but now number 3 we are going to learn is a verb because it starts with the verb assign numbers to the pages of a book etc say you have an exercise book and you want to assign numbers to the page 
pages. Page number one, there you write number one. Page number two, there you write number two. Page number three, there you write number three. So this way you are assigning numbers to the pages of your exercise book. So what is that verb? A single word you may use for that. Otherwise you have to use this way, assign numbers to the pages. And if you use that single word that is so meaningfully charged, that you don't have to use so many other words. And that verb is paginate. Paginate. Let me write down the spelling. P A G E N A T E paginate paginate the word is paginate assign numbers to the pages of a book etc etc here you may write uh, exercise book uh, notebook whatever you like so that is paginate uh, I want to paginate this exercise book why do you want to paginate this exercise book so that I can make a table of contents table of contents uh, just at the front of the uh, book there is a table containing the chapters, the names of the chapters. So that is called a table of contents. So uh, to make a table of contents you need to paginate your exercise book. Paginate your exercise book. Let's move on to number four. And number four is to perform especially music for voluntary donations in the streets subways etc often we come across uh, such uh, such guys who sing songs for collecting donations voluntary donations of course they don't force you so when you are traveling by train you will see suddenly a guy uh, gets on the train and starts singing a certain song to the accompaniment of a certain musical instrument and while he is singing, he stretches his hand out or he asks the passengers to give him some donations. And we often, or many of us, voluntarily, willingly offer him some money. Why? Because uh, we want to uh, just uh, recognize his skill, his talent. When you are uh, say walking down the uh, busy streets of Kolkata, suddenly you will find that by the roadside a certain guy is uh, singing a song. And many people stand there around him to regale themselves with the beautiful melody of the song. So what is that person doing? That's the question. This will be also, this will be um, uh, a kind of uh, you may use it uh, of course two is there beginning so to perform whenever you see you understand that it is a verb and if it is a verb then the word required is also a verb so you have to learn another verb now and the verb is busk b-u-s-k let me write down b u is K. Now you can very easily use this, uh, use this word in a sentence. What is that guy doing over there? Oh, he is basking. He is basking. That is, he is singing a song or he is playing some music in order to collect some donations. Maybe for a certain purpose or maybe it's his livelihood. So it is busk. Let's move on to number five. A dwarfish legendary creature supposed to guard the earth's treasures underground. According to our mythology, there is a huge treasure trove under the earth. So this is the earth's treasure. And to guard that earth's treasure, there is a legendary creature. In reality, perhaps we don't see, even science may not, uh, may not, not science must not 
uh, endorse that because there's no proof. But if you go through the legends, you will see that uh, one particular person um, goes to discover that treasure trove. And when he goes to loot that treasure trove, treasure, then he has to, of course, confront a certain legendary creature without fighting. It is not possible for him to get that treasure. So what is that God called? That person? In Bengal, we generally call Jokho. And in India, there is this, this particular word is pronounced in a different way, Yaksh. So Yaksh is there. Then we call in our Indian language or in Bengali, Jokho. Now in English also there is a particular term. And what is that term? The term is Nom. The spelling is a little different, difficult rather. G N O M E No. The pronunciation is no, uh, no, though it starts with G. G is silent. G N O M E No. So when a person goes to get the treasure underground, he has to face or he has to confront a gnome. A gnome, legendary creature, of course in reality you may not find, may not, how is it possible for us to find in reality, uh, whatever is there in the legends. So uh, it's a legendary creature, the short, dwarfish, dwarfish means short, there are some dwarfs, so dwarfish, this is an adjective which means short figured. The word is gnome. So a sentence, how can you make a sentence? In legends, we often see there is a fight between a prince and a gnome. In order to get the treasure. The treasure is protected, guarded by a gnome. And sometimes the legendary creature is also like a dragon. So here the actual word is gnome. Remember that. Let us move on to number six. And extract from a text, especially one set for translation or comment in an examination. When you appear at an examination, language examination, you will see a certain passage is quoted from some story or from some uh, newspapers. And you are asked to translate that passage into uh, some other language. If the passage is in English, you are asked to translate that into Sanskrit or into uh, Hindi or into Bengali and you have to do that. Or if the passage is in Bengali or uh, Hindi or even Sanskrit, if you have st studied Sanskrit, you must know, you have to translate that Sanskrit passage into English. Now, what is that passage called? That is the question. So, of course, a noun we need here, that extract, an extract from a text, from a text it has been extracted, especially one set for translation. This is, this question is said, this passage is set for translation or comment or you are asked to write a commentary on that passage. So, what is that original passage called? The word is gobbit. Yeah, not that gobbit in Bengal we use this word gobbit, uh, um, of course, uh, to mean a fool or a stupid, but not that gobbit. It's an English word. This uh, word is G O double B E. T, gobbit. The word is gobbit. G O double B E T, gobbit. So there is a gobbit there. At the examination, did you, uh, did you uh, have a gobbit for translation into uh, English? Yeah, we had a gobbit. The gobbit, for gobbit number one was very, very tough indeed. So it was very difficult for me to translate that. But gobbit number two was very simple. 
So this is why you may use this particular word in a certain sentence. And the last one for this video session now. Number seven. A style, activity, or interest which is very popular for a short period of time. Suddenly a new fashion comes into existence. And you see all the uh, teenage boys and girls uh, are uh, following that fashion. But fashion doesn't last long. That is so very uh, shallow that that uh, fashion may be in vogue for hardly a few months or maybe uh, a couple of years and after that it vanishes into thin air. Nobody wants to follow that particular fashion. What is that called? What is that fashion called or the style called or that activity called? In a, maybe in a movie you will see the hero uh, sports his hair in a certain way, certain manner. And all the young boys and girls, after watching that film, go to the hairdressers and ask the hairdressers to uh, get their hair cut in the same fashion. And that doesn't last long. After a couple of months, you see a new film comes up. Their uh, new hero sports is here in a different fashion. And everybody starts following that. So what is that particular one, short-lived one called short-lived style? activity or interest. It doesn't last long. If it lasts long, then this word will not be applicable. If it is in vogue only for a short period of time, it is called very simple word, fed, F-A-D, F -A -D. Getting the hair cut in that particular fashion is simply a fad. <coughs> Excuse me. So fad, this fad is there, it's a new fad. You may say that, oh, uh, say uh, people have started wearing some sort of uh, uh, trousers or shorts, which are very peculiar to look at, outlandish. So you can say, oh, why, why are you uh, wearing uh, such clothes? Oh, that's the fad, man. The boy may tell you, that's the fad. He knows, this is a fad. This is short-lived. But still, as this fashion is, in, uh, is pre uh, prevailing, when this fashion prevails, people generally follow this fashion. It's called fad. All right, so seven words we have learned today, and the seven words are... Mesomorph, mannequin, paginate, basque, gnome, gobbit, fed. These are the seven words, seven new words which we have added to our vocabulary today. And earlier we learned a lot more words, and I think those words have not only been added to your vocabulary but, but also been committed to memory. Otherwise, what is the value? What is the point? It is pointless to learn new words if you forget the new words after a certain length of time. You have to uh, retain the words in your memory so that you can use the words when you are constructing sentences. Do you understand what I say? So, my dear friends, I, I haven't heard from you for a long stretch of time. Why don't you communicate, my dear friends? I'm thirsty. I'm very eager to get comments from you. Hardly one or two viewers write certain comments. If you don't like a certain thing about this video, don't hesitate to write that even in the comment box. Guide me, my dear friends. All right. So those of you, uh, this is a ritualistic uh, statement I have to make. Those of you who have not yet uh, subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, how is it possible for us to grow? You understand what I mean? Uh, thank you very much, my dear friends. I'm very glad to see you.
See you already in the next next show or next what is that called next uh, uh, session. This is also like a show, and for that because I'm sporting a hat like an umpire. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye.